Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Let's Talk. Today we are going to talk about Circomania. We have two guests in the studio. Welcome, both of you. The first one uh, standing next to me is Daniel Edelhoff. And you are a director and chair of the Department of Prostodentic Dentistry at the University Hospital Ludwig Maximilians University in Munich in Germany. The other uh, guest is standing a bit farther away from me. Uh, you are called Weil Atz, uh, who is a professor and chairman of the Department of Prostodontics at Tufts University School of Dental Medicine and Professor of Prosthodontics at the School of Dentistry at the University of Freiburg in Germany. Welcome both of you to the studio. Thank you. We are going to uh, talk about this uh, circomania, a beautiful word, but actually we have to start at the beginning to start uh, to talk about circonia, which is a new ceramic uh, uh, material. Uh, why do we need this new material? Because we already have beautiful materials, haven't we? What is the advantage of uh, zirconia? So, the benefit of zirconia is actually the strength, especially, and it's tooth colored, so you expand the indication of ceramics which were before alumina or mainly silica-based ceramics, which have a very small indication. Now, with the zirconia, we can open the spectrum of indications again in all directions to replace metal in a lot of fields. Okay, so I understood it, it is uh, as strong as uh, titanium and as beautiful as porcelain or isn't that the case? Are there also uh, disadvantages? Uh, what um, I would like to add is that the material is basically not new. Um, ah. Zirconia has been for many years in dentistry, but it evolved and we have so many versions or uh, different um, types of zirconia available now for the application. Uh -huh. And the newest generation of zirconia, which is relatively um, weaker than the conventional one is more aesthetically pleasing, which is more translucent. It can transmit um, light or get the light to go through. So it gives more an aesthetic appearance. Now, um, the advantage is what Daniel just mentioned is it is stronger, of course, than other ceramic materials. But of course, it's not stronger than um, metallic no. uh, materials. No. Um, in addition to that is the biocompatibility of the material. So it can be accepted, well accepted by the soft tissues. It can be accepted also even in bone uh, tissue. We have zirconia implants. So um, the indication spectrum has expanded mm -hmm. and the applicability of zirconia in different um, uh, clinical scenarios is um, more spread than what we had before. Ah, so that is the main uh, advantage. Um, is, isn't this a problem still that you can still see through zirconia? Because um, what I understood is that zirconia still needs a, a top layer on it. And there is a problem with this layer because it can crack, isn't it? Yeah. So the layer you're talking about uh, was actually the first generation of zirconia, which was introduced in 1990. 98, 1998 approximately. So the framework was white, mm -hmm. white like the wall, like the table over here. Mm -hmm. So to make it tooth looking, you needed something on the above, which is more, has more optical depth and resembles much more the neighbor tooth. Mm -hmm. And this was made by the dental technician by hand. Ah. So the framework by the machine, CAD CAM, but the top of it by the hand. And ah. this was the weakest part of the whole construction of the uh, So you, exactly. you're completely right, Desiree. We had a lot of uh, chippings, fractures of the ceramic on the buff, not on the yeah. framework, but on the uh, covering, the veneering, we yeah. say. 
And you said it is um, it was uh, used in in older um, generations, but is this top layer not used anymore? Um, you can still use it, and it has his indication, especially in the aesthetic zone. This mm -hmm. layer makes it m even more beautiful. The framework is still have like a layering, like the natural tooth, but. In areas where you need a lot of strength, like posterior teeth, where aesthetics is not the uh, first uh, point, uh, this, is um, this would be perfect if you use it as a full circonia part. We call it monolithic, one piece, without any manual layer on the top. So that is, that is the newest um, generation of circonia. Exactly. Uh, you you uh, have no chippings shipping op opportunities anymore. So this is the advantage. Exactly. Yeah. And there is another possibility uh, of zirconia, uh, I understood. Um, you can uh, uh, be more precise, so you can develop more precise uh, models with help of three-dimensional imaging. Uh, and and uh, then you can also prevent this uh, problem of, of cracking. Well, I wouldn't say that you would be more precise with the use of the technology. It's all depending on um, how you acquire the data or how you collect the three-dimensional data. Mm -hmm. Not all, uh, depending on the indication, if we can start with uh, single crowns mm -hmm. on the teeth or you can expand the indication spectrum to full arc, um, there are differences, of course, in terms of the accuracy. So for single crowns, if I'm using a so-called intraoral scanner to acquire it, Pretty much nearly all intraoral scanners are capable of acquiring um, good and accurate data. Ah. The longer the span, the more curved the span, it will create less accuracy, which of course is going to affect the overall accuracy or the fit of the restoration. Exactly. So I would say um, it depends on the data acquisition method. And then you go to the next step, which is the manufacturing method, um, milling or grinding or the okay, call it whatever you want is not same in terms of the accuracy across different manufacturing machines. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, don't forget the human factor. Now, how the lab technician or the person who's operating the machine or the mm -hmm. software is going to design and come up with the data fusion, this also affects the overall accuracy. Uh -huh. so this all comes with experience. Yeah, it's more more difficult uh, uh, than you think. It's not only about the technology, the 3D technology, but also about humans. Yes, um, it, it's yeah. humans. And another aspect is also uh, you have the choice between densely sintered material, where the um, material will be milled out by diamonds, mm -hmm. or pre-sintered stage. Pre-sintered stage is very common, all the systems are using it, but if you have a larger extension of the bridge, um, mm -hmm. the shrinkage, the sintering process can have some uh, movements, some uh, dis, uh, torsions, and that makes it also, it influences also the precision, negatively in some cases. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that sounds all together very promising, this uh, future of uh, Circonia. But your session was called Circomania. Um, can you tell uh, how much it is used nowadays in, 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 the, in practice? Well, I think uh, we have more and more penetration of the usage of the material for several reasons. I mean, uh, compared to the metal ceramic restorations and this is driven of course because of its white color mm -hmm. and also the resistance or the strength of the material there are no real calculations on how much is penetrating the um, dental profession worldwide mm. but at least in the US there are labs that can produce 5,000 crowns a month it means that um, if you can calculate it around 5 million crowns a year in the US are being produced out of this material of course, these are not 100% accurate data, but I'm just talking about one lab that is producing this uh, type of restorations. And we see a progressive increase in the applicability of these materials or this specific material. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We don't have real data about how much is it in other countries. 
So okay. they're very competitive now, with the, especially with the precious alloys, because oh. the gold price, you know it, uh, if political crisis turning up, uh, it's very high in the moment, so you can get a wider, a more aesthetic uh, restoration for a lower price. So this is the main decision-making tool for the patients in the moment, that they switch to white restorations. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can say that uh, the United States is the country where Sagonia is used most often? I'm, I'm not sure about this. There's a quite significant percentage of among all the restorations that are being produced. They are made out of zirconia, but if you think about Asia, for example, China and other countries, we have to get information about that, and we don't have real statistics available. That's true. Okay, okay. But still, uh, it is used uh, widely, and it's used more and more, but still there are a lot of clinicians very skeptic about this. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is the case? Uh, this is perhaps about uh, history a little bit, because uh, sometimes the companies push very hard a new material which is not investigated enough in, re in controlled uh, trials, clinical mm -hmm. trials. You need at least, let's say, five-year clinical trial to say this is a good material or bad material. And for the very new types, like Valat had, has described already, for the very new types of zirconia, we have not enough clinical proof. We have in vitro studies which say might be very good. You can bond on it, it's strong enough in certain indications, but mm. the, reality, the reality is only in clinical studies and they are missing, at least for the newer ones. For the older ones, for the ones uh, which were released on the market in 2000, beginning mm. 2000, uh, we have very good proof. They reach normally almost to the metal supported systems, which is the gold standard. Okay. Smaller bridges, at least. Yeah, it sounds a, bi a bit uh, paradoxical because it's used for uh, quite a long time, and still there are not enough clinical studies. Mm. What is the reason for that? Is that is there not not enough money, maybe? No, I wouldn't say that. But um, historically, in dentistry, you have every year or two a new material coming to the market or a product. And if you think about zirconia itself, it is now we are in the third or fourth generation of the material. And uh, once you introduce it, you would like to use it before it has been clinically verified. Usually you need five years of clinical assessment before you can say that this type of material or restoration would work. So um, the development is going very fast, but the clinical testing is not going at that same uh, pace. Um, mm -hmm. I think this is a dilemma that we have to accept. The majority of the clinicians that are using zirconia nowadays, um, they are using it based on their clinical experience and not based on the clinical evidence. So um, this is up to the clinician's discretion and what is he comfortable with to apply the zirconia with. We tried in our lectures to provide some guidelines uh, for the clinicians about when to use these kind of restorations and when to raise a red flag and we switch to other material. But again, rigid clinical evidence is still not available yet. And that is probably the reason why so many clinicians are skeptic. Or are there yeah. other reasons, maybe? There are other reasons as well. Um, with a, a traditional metal versions, you could use a very simple um, insertion technique with a the cement. They will tolerate this. With a new zirconia, in general with ceramics, you normally have to, has to use to, uh, adhesive technique, which is very complicated with different steps to bond it onto the tooth structure. And this is not so easy. And this, in combination, might be the reason a the, lot of uh, colleagues will hesitate to use it for the moment. Yeah. Okay. And I think if I can add to that, I mean, um, directly speaking, there is no the gold standard material that can be used across all indications or there's no silver bullet material that you can use. Um, you can use zirconia for specific indications which would work, but other indications you would um, divert the road to another material that would be more aesthetically pleasing. It can provide you with more versatile solutions to match the color, for example, with adjacent teeth if you're using single crowns. Mm -hmm. So again, we don't have that uh, standards gold standard material that you can use across everything. Ah, okay. Yeah. And um, is it um, a dream of you that it uh, um, 
that the use of uh, zirconia uh, will be um, will be more widely used. Uh, do you, do you, do you have a, hopes, a, hopes for the future? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it would be a uh, dream for me. My dream actually is to um, um, be able to regrow the damaged parts of the teeth back. Or even if you lose the tooth, not to place an implant, but you grow teeth again. There is some research about this thing. The research and development will continue um, to find this gold standard material, but um, I don't think that we'll be able to identify such a material in a short period. Okay. And I always think it's a one step in a long evolution to look for a material which resembles optically and mechanically to a natural tooth. And the best will be, I absolutely agree, to have the opportunity in the future to use cells which produce tooth structure. Of course, you cannot use it for bridge work, probably. No? But, Grow the uh, tooth then. Yeah. Grow the tooth in between. <laughs> the whole tooth can yes, be uh, exactly. perhaps replaced. This would be the future, of course. That will be the future. Oh, yeah. it, 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 yes. this was not in your uh, presentation. I'd, I'd like to dream a little bit more uh, <laughs> about this ideal uh, future. But what, what do you hope, what, what direction should the research take? Should it be, uh, should there be more money for um, developing this um, next generation of Sargonia? Or uh, should there be more money for this three-dimensional uh, techniques? Or I, I think that you need um, to put efforts and research and development in both directions, mm. technology and materials, um, okay. because they are coupled. You cannot separate these two. So okay. you are, we are trying to create the so-called virtual patient on our computer screen, which will enhance the communication between the treatment team mm -hmm. and also include the patient with it. And at the same time, we would like to identify a material that can provide us with simplicity mm. as a solution and also long-term stability and not to forget the aesthetic outcome. So focusing on both would be is a must, of course. And maybe even educating humans in, an, in a better way? This is the learning curve, of course. This is yeah. a must. Education is one of the components that is a must. Whenever we develop something new, we need to develop also the um, learning curve. Yeah. And we see a great potential also in the technical development. As I mentioned in the lecture, we have intraoral scanners now, which can also not only look onto the outer side of the tooth, they can look inside. And uh, this gives you a lot of information about the layering of natural teeth. So you can use it for multi-material uh, printing, 3D printing. I think this is an, this rapid prototyping means an additive manufacturing. This will be the future, not only related to zirconia, also for other materials. For other materials, yes. because I remember there was another material we didn't mention yet. Um, we were talking about uh, uh, zirconia and then this layer uh, of, of um, other ceramics. On the top. On a, and there was uh, even a promising future for a third layer. Yeah. What was the name of this layer? Um, for a third layer, we have the multi-material layers mm -hmm. with different um, properties of the mechanics. And, and if you can put it between one disc, uh, it makes it very easy to produce. This is a stage now. But why, what I was talking about is more that you have multi-material printing. That means you mm -hmm. can really use uh, different materials to mimic uh, optical and mechanical properties of natural tooth, perhaps also in bridge work. Yes. Yeah? Yes, we have these graded materials or sh uh, gradually shaded materials because the inherent materials that we are using, these blanks, they have just one color. So mm -hmm. now you can get more translucent the more yet you go towards the incisal edge where you, your smile is going to be uh, obvious in that area. So it will resemble the appearance of natural teeth. So we're heading to the, towards that direction. That's the call. And uh, just to uh, refer to uh, uh, your uh, mixture of materials, do you really mean that they are not layers anymore, but um, a mix, uh, that, it's, that all these materials work it, together yes, in very yes, chaotic? Yes. Uh, that would be the find the future, the goal, ah. is that you put it together. Not only, you cannot separate it anymore. It's one piece, like the tooth as well. Uh, you see borders, but uh, they are growing together, these borders. And 
And this is something which we okay. could perhaps by additive techniques mimic in the future. And, exactly. and nowadays it's not possible. No? Ah. With this so when, when all these materials next to zirconia are mixed, the teeth will be uh, stronger and uh, aesthetically more beautiful. Yes, that's the goal. It, that's For that's sure. the bright future the we yes. are uh, seeing um, in front of us. Um, yes. Well, um, I think we are there. Perfect. Yes. Okay. I think I know everything about zirconia and about zirconia mania. I'd like to uh, thank you uh, uh, very much, Daniel Edelhoff and uh, Wal well, Ed. And thank you, thank thank you, you so much uh, for watching this edition about zirconia. Um, I hope you are um, uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel, the EAO YouTube channel. And I hope you to see you at the conference next year. Be there.